Hello everyone and greetings for the day. Welcome back to another tutorial on ISTQB Advanced Technical Test Analyst. We are getting started with chapter 2 where we will be talking about a lot of white box test techniques as it is very important for the technical test analyst to understand a lot of white box testing techniques. As a part of this chapter, we'll be covering a lot of different techniques which we uh, have covered some of them in foundation, but uh, a lot of new things are going to come up in this syllabus that is advanced level. So stay tuned for that. To start with the very first topic in this chapter is to just give a basic introduction of this chapter and get started with one technique that is statement testing. Of course, uh, when you talk about the introduction, we will have uh, white box testing techniques which requires a little bit of programming interface understanding and also requires you to be aware of how these techniques are being applied in the organization and how that technique helps you to minimize your effort towards preparing minimal test cases with maximum or probably 100 percent coverage so this is it's really important for a technical test analyst to understand and recognize the need of the techniques which can be applied at any point of time uh, during the course of uh, non-functional testing and require that to be implemented in order to have a better coverage and implementation of such efficient test cases. We'll be covering statement testing, decision testing, MCDC, that is modified condition decision coverage, multiple condition coverage or testing, basic path testing and API testing. In this tutorial, we are talking about statement testing. Just a quick highlight here. What you see is an example of uh, statement testing, which I have taken from my foundation certification syllabus. And yes, it remains the same from the foundation. So you also find uh, we will not be going in detail about this in advance. Rather, we'll be concentrating on what is mainly added in advanced level. For more detail on the basic execution of this technique, you may click on the card above and uh, you can go back to the foundation level to that respective video which will give you a ground level information of statement testing just to recall. Because we understand that all of you are foundation certified and remember the concepts of uh, white box techniques. But yes, uh, let's proceed ahead. Uh, I'm just going to give you a quick recap of what statement testing is all about. It is uh, either called as statement testing or statement coverage, which is a measure of number of executable statements in a source code exercised by the test. So whatever you see in this diagram right here, which is an example of flowchart for the given pseudo code on the left. So it is really important for you to derive the flowchart from the given program or pseudo code to you in the examination and uh, convert that into flowchart and then identify the given boxes here are called as nodes or statements, whereas the branches or the arrows, what you see in the diagram, are called as branches or decisions. And that's how it basically makes it as a technique itself. So covering all the nodes with minimum number of paths is called as statement testing or minimum test cases required for 100% statement coverage, whereas covering the arrows is called as branch coverage or decision coverage. So obviously here we identify what is a path. Path is an executable path which reaches the end of the code starting from the start point. But it is really important when you draw a path in a flowchart, it should cover or it must cover the statements when you're talking about statement testing. So if in this example you see there's an else uh, statement as well, that means if it is true, it should print A is bigger, else it should print B is bigger. Thus we will need at least two test cases uh, to have 100% statement coverage. And it's really important for you to understand that how your paths would be really important to identify the minimum number of test cases required for maximum coverage. Again, I would request you to just get into the details from the foundation level tutorial to get more idea about the basics of statement testing. Here I'm taking a quick example of about uh, what kind of example you can see in the examination in advanced level certification. So it's uh, it was very important for me to uh, create a template here of the real time scenario of the examination that the only difference between foundation and advanced level right now is the foundation level 
is no longer asking you the program based questions but earlier it used to ask simple if else conditions to be derived and found a uh, minimum number of test cases for statement coverage but when it comes to advanced level the pseudocode will be more complex or rather complicated uh, so you may have something like this what you see on the screen right now and to convert that into flowchart will be really important and just like this what you see on the screen right now this is what the flowchart will be I know it's quite sim small and complicated to read everything but yes uh, this is what I had to do to cover the entire flowchart with the proper details onto the screen in a presentation slide so here the question is about how many test cases or what is the minimum number of test cases required for 100% statement coverage so that's more important to understand that how many paths will be required minimum in order to have 100% statement coverage so let's understand here that how exactly uh, using this flowchart we can identify the minimum number of test cases for 100% statement coverage for the given flow, all you have to do is start identifying the paths to cover the maximum nodes as much as possible. And uh, if one statement is or one path is not covering all the one all the statements, then you may need more than one test cases to cover everything. So all you have to do is cover all the paths, all the statements using minimum number of paths. So we, let's take the first path here, and we are following the true mode and let's see uh, how much does it cover and we are just following the true path and this is how we got our first path starting from the point A that is the start of it and then reaching the end but we see that there are a lot of statements which are not covered so we would need another one following this way that means reaching the false one here the side and then coming and going straight again with false and covering the all other nodes on the right side so right side is if you see everything has been covered but there's another one which is remaining here on the left so you would need one more path to cover 100% statements in this given program so putting it all together you would have at least three test cases required for covering 100% statement using this example in this flowchart so now you understand that this is how we were able to achieve three as minimum number of test cases for 100% statement coverage. At the same time, uh, the tip which I have given in foundation level applies here as well, which is the minimum test cases for 100% statement coverage can be measured with one plus count of else. So all you have to do is count the number of else in the program and just add one to it, you will get the answer. So that shortcut is still valid no matter what kind of complexity you have in your pseudocode. You just have to count the number of else in order to uh, find the minimum test cases for 100% statement coverage and add it with one. So one plus count of else in the program will give you the answer for minimum number of test cases for 100% statement coverage. And uh, that's just a formula so you can avoid your time being wasted for creating complicated flowcharts and probably you may go wrong in order to create the flowchart or probably also in order to count the number of paths required to have a proper coverage. So I would request you to follow this but do practice with different set of sample questions because uh, I don't want to make the tutorial longer but just wanted to give you a quick understanding of some simple example here and this is how the template of example questions will be in the examination. So team, that's all from the statement testing or statement coverage tutorial of the series. Uh, I'll be getting back to you with anything more on the techniques with from chapter two. Should you have anything else, feel free to comment below. I'm there to address your queries and answer them well. And till then, keep learning, keep exploring, and keep understanding the context. Thanks for watching the video team, and happy learning.